as an artist, I feel an inclination to admire the art of other artists. Now, what, what, what am I calling myself an artist here? My videos are my art. I'm a terrible painter, uh, not a good musician. And I know this because I tried to play piano and I, you know, I was trying to take it seriously. It just didn't gel with me. Okay, then that doesn't seem like it is my Tao to play music. However, dancing is a different matter. Okay, so we're all artists. There's nothing special about being an artist. Okay, I want to put it out there. We're all creative. We're all artists. We're all expressing something. Now, I express it in these videos. I've got a thing with words. I can mince and mix and match words together in a certain way that is appealing to the ears, that is appealing to the intellect. That's unfortunate for me because I'm now stuck in, in this world of intellectualism. Uh, and I'll tell you, it could be a, a bit of a drag. All right. But that's, I mean, that's the way it is. That's the Tao. That's the way the creative Tao is manifesting itself through me. So that these videos are my art. My words are my art. My mind in, in many ways is my art, my thought process, my philosophy. All forms of play within the illusion, within Maya, within Maya. Uh, and then, you know, there's, of course, other artistic expressions that I have. Something like dancing. I'm a pretty good dancer. Uh, got a natural thing for it. And, uh, you know, things like calisthenics and gymnastics. Quite, quite something, actually. When I put these moves that I do, these, you know, complex moves, human flag, handstands together, and it, it just looks really, really beautiful. Poetry in motion. And that's what an athlete is. An athlete is an artist. Okay, an athlete is an artist also. So, uh, I'm no special, I'm not special. Okay, I, I, if you think I'm stroking my ego, I'm not. I'm just describing what it is. Because I could look at you and if I know you in person, I could probably tell you this is, these are the ways you're, you're an artist. Because everybody's an artist, there's nothing special about it. As it turns out, things like love, things like art... Things like creativity are not special. They're just quite ordinary. It's the way it is. Love is. You're love. Everything's love. It's just this. It's not, it's not special. We make it special in our, in our movies and our media and our popular culture. But it isn't. It's just we lack, we lack it so much that we make it special. But it is very, very ordinary. I, lo like, I love you. It's, it's quite ordinary. Yeah, you feel it, you, you know, it's, 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 it's love, you're love, everything is love. And so you're an artist, and I'm an artist, and everything is art. Everything is art. In fact, this is the, the, the creation is art. We talked in a previous, we addressed in a previous video about how life is essentially meaningless, and it's, it's lila, it's divine play, divine dance, and it's the one uh, reveling and marveling in its creation, in, a, in the beauty, in the artistic way of its creation. We talked about it. And so, you know, everything is art then. Everything becomes art. Everything is beauty. You know, you look at nature. Nature is very artistic. It's beautiful. And yet it's mathematical at the same time, which is really mind-blowing, mind-boggling. It's the paradox manifesting itself. You know, it's very mathematical, yet artistic. And usually you think of these two as different, but they're actually like, just like day and night, it's uh, the two sides of the same coin. So then art is the same way, right? We're artists and we are a manifestation of, we're creation, we're, we're God experiencing its creation. And so we manifest our creativity, our art through. So all that long and probably entertaining, actually quite entertaining uh, introduction into art and, and why I am an artist and you're an artist, I'm inclined to... I feel an inclination to admire and revel and be in awe of other artists and their creations, their art, because that's me manifesting me in a different way and in a different shape and form. So, movies and TV shows are art. That's pure art. And I grew up watching, a, like, I kind of... I'm not a movie buff by any means, but there was a period in my life where I watched a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows, and I don't really have time to do it, not much time to do it now anymore, but I'd like to revisit some of the things 
some of the shows and some of the movies that I have watched that have really captivated me that I've seen over and over and over. And I just have an inclination to revisit again, even though I've watched them over and over and over. And there's four of them. I'll, I'll tell you guys about, about those four. Maybe they're already in the title. But what, how I'm going to go on about it is this. So uh, we'll talk about what the TV shows are, but I'm going to be watching an episode. There's actually five TV shows, five of them. I'm going to be watching an episode, maybe every day, maybe every other day. Okay, maybe actually once a week because I really don't I really don't have time for it. But I it, it, I really want to revisit it as sort of again with a fresh perspective. Maybe once a week I'll watch an episode of one of them. Okay, Game of Thrones or something. I'll talk Game of Thrones is one of them. And then after watching, I'll make a video on something that I took out of the episode, and I'll make you know maybe specific references or something. A lot of you guys may be not interested in these videos because you don't know these TV shows, you haven't seen them. Don't worry about it. But maybe actually it'll do something on it because these, these things are very, very well researched. Like people search them all the time, the TV shows. Maybe we'll gain some new audience coming in, looking into them. Okay, so for example, uh, one of the shows is uh, Game of Thrones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because the final season is coming out, right? And I'm going to be watching the final season. But while I'm watching the final season... Uh, I'm going to go back to the first season, even though I've seen it uh, at least like three or four times. But it's been a while. There's a lot of things I don't remember. And I'm going to watch episode by episode. Really sit there and really concentrate, really just be there for the episode. And they're very captivating. And uh, I'll watch the episode. And after the episode, whatever, something sticks out, maybe a certain character, something Tyrion Lannister said, something, something Ned Stark said, you know, I love Ned Stark. Maybe a character analysis, something. And I'll make a video for it and I'll post it. Then maybe the next week, it could be a different TV show. It could be the same. Or maybe the next day, maybe if I, if I can manage to have enough time, put an hour aside to watch these really marvelous uh, creations of art, then maybe I could do this more often. But uh, yeah, essentially, that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, let's talk about the, the TV shows, the five TV shows, starting with Game of Thrones, as I said it. Game of Thrones is beautiful. I read the books too. It's beautiful. The amount of imagination that uh, George R. R. Martin has and the creativity. And it's unbelievable. It is, he, well, you can say he created his own world, but I say he just channeled it out of the astral realm. Matter of fact is these realms that he created are every bit as real as this one. How about that? And they're all illusions. How about that? Okay, so now I'm going to rewatch it again from that perspective. You see, that's different because before when I watched it, I didn't have that perspective that I'm watching something real in the astral plane. But everything we can imagine is real, at least as real, relatively real, as real as this one. And they're all illusions. So they're just different parts of the amusement park. So I'm going to watch it from that perspective, that this is real. Okay, uh, and uh, man, there's a lot of things we're going to have to talk about here. You know, for anybody who's a Game of Thrones fan, you guys are going to love these videos. Because I'll, whatever, if, if let's say the episode, for me, Ned Stark stands out in that episode. So I'll make a character analysis of Ned Stark or something. He said one quote that really blew my mind. Boom. You know, write it down and we'll talk about it. Okay. And I'll go every episode. There's got to be something that's going to stand out for me that I'm going to make a video on. That's number one. That's the first show. Uh, the second show. Uh, and I... Yeah, I don't know how well you guys know this because this audience is more, I guess, you know, consciousness oriented or whatever. But The Sopranos, The Sopranos, The Sopranos is, <laughs> The Sopranos is hilarious, dramatic, realistic in the sense that, it, you know, you feel like you are with these mobsters. You are in their lives like you see it. It's like it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy that, you know, all of them, the actors, and it's just unbelievable. It's got everything. It's got drama. It's got comedy. Uh, it's got lots of lessons. You know, maybe you might, because most of these characters are just playing out. Uh, how can I put this? They're plugged into the lower realms, let's say, okay? Into the demon realms, the hungry ghost realms, etc. Animal realm. <laughs> so... Uh, there's maybe things we can learn how to not be 
But then there are things like, you know, I recall Tony Soprano would say something that would just be like, wow, he just spoke the truth. He didn't even know that he just channeled great wisdom. He's a mob. It's a mob. It's a mob TV show, by the way. Okay, it's 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 a mob, mobsters. <laughs> so, uh, New Jersey mobsters, and yeah, but there's still a lot of things you can learn and uh, lots of humor. We can even break down some of the humor. It's really hilarious. So, same thing, same operation, uh, and I I think I've seen The Sopranos at least ten times. This is, I'm practically memorized like half the lines. Uh, I was watching Uncle Junior, uh, just best of Uncle Junior, who's just hilarious. So that's the second TV show, second piece of art that I'd like to re-examine and share some of the insights that I have. Third one, Seinfeld. Okay, Seinfeld. Seinfeld, <laughs> I must have seen each episode at least seven, eight times. Uh, still cracks me up every time. Okay, Kramer and George Costanza <laughs> and Jerry's sarcasm. So, you know, I'd like to also, <laughs> this, is a, this is funny, it's a sitcom, okay? But, you, you know, talking about creation being Leela and its play, humor is sort of the closest thing we can get to this play. So if we can share a laugh together and, and uh, you know, break down some of the humor in Seinfeld, and then see the humor in our lives, it's very, very uh, relevant and relatable to uh, day to day, just to, you know, like simple things. Because Jerry's thing, Jerry Seinfeld's thing is observational comedy. That's his comedy. That's his type of stand up comedy. So the entire show, it's a show about nothing. That's what it's called. It's called Seinfeld, the show about nothing. So again, same thing. You know, this one is probably easier to watch. I won't make a video for each episode because, you know, The Sopranos, Game of Thrones, that's an hour long. So, so Seinfeld is 20 minutes. So I'm, I'm not going to make a video for every episode, okay? But if there is something, some, some, some sort of a comedic thing stands out, pops out in one episode, and there is practically in every episode, uh, but I won't make for every episode because there's way too many of them. Uh, but same thing, same thing. Anything that stands out, I'll name the episode so you could go watch it. I'll always name it in the title, like the episode number, the season number etc so you can go watch it okay if you want to get a good laugh Seinfeld is a good place to go <laughs> and then on the same humor vibe because uh, <laughs> I tell you what I'd like I'd like to hang around in that humor vibe because the more the more you realize that life indeed is a play that indeed it is a cosmic joke then why not hang around those uh, neighborhoods okay because it really is, and it really makes you feel lighter. Like I have, I have a routine where I, I like, I laugh controllably for fifteen minutes, okay, and and that's partly why I stay light in these videos. Because you know that cosmic giggle that I get, experience, put myself in deliberately every day, it just makes me light a lot lighter. You understand? Laughter is is one of one. You gotta have deep laughter every day. If you're not deeply laughing every day, then You've got a lot of obstructions. Deal with them because, really, when you get when you get out of the way, there's nothing. When you, when it's no longer cloudy, it's sun. Same thing. When it's no longer cloudy, there is but the cosmic giggle. So South Park is number four, and although same thing, it's the same treatment as Seinfeld in the sense that there's way too many episodes, way too many seasons. Again, if something stands out as I'm watching, and it will quite often, then I'll make a video on it because I still obviously if I just make only videos about this, then uh, what about the other stuff? We have like a, the Ram Dass Be Here Now series, the Tao Te Ching series, and a bunch of other things. So these will just be like how I have the Tao Te Ching verse one, verse two, verse, we're on, to, we're gonna be doing verse three soon. In the same way, like it not, it's gonna pop in and out. I wanna leave this very flexible. I wanna leave this channel very flexible in the way it is. I really like the direction of it. I like the flexibility. I like the versatility of it. We've got to talk about Buddhism and Hinduism also. We've got to talk about so many things here. Sufism, psychedelics, consciousness. This is way too much. Life is way too intense and interesting, right? So these things will also pop in and out. They're just going to be like, as the channel goes on, you'll see this video, Sopranos video, South Park, right? And then, last but not least, and I say, I save the best for last. This is the best. Okay, I saved the best. This is the best, hands down. The 
Lord of the Rings. Okay? The Lord of the Rings. Wow, man. Uh, wow. That's one of the few things that makes me cry. So many parts of it. When, when okay, spoiler alert. Is, okay, every time you watch any of these videos, I'm just putting it out there, it's gonna be spoiler alert. So spoiler alert, every time, this is a spoiler alert here, okay? So if you, if you have not watched Lord of the Rings, I, I mean, what the hell are you doing? Okay, how, sh you shouldn't even be on this planet. <laughs> Go watch it. What are you doing? So, like the scene where Baromir dies, Makes me cry every time, every time, every time. Not a single time I watch it, I don't just cry like a little baby, okay? Makes me cry every time, every time. It's so beautiful. Lord of the Rings is so beautiful, man. It's so beautiful. And uh, to be honest, that's probably the one I'm going to have the most deep insights with. Lord of the Rings. Because I think uh, Tolkien was a very conscious high being and he was in touch with very, very high spirit. With, the, with, with very high levels of the amusement park, of the illusion. And he channeled something beautiful from the astral plane. From the astral plane. That's it's the same concept as the Game of Thrones. I'm watching something that is real. Before I'd watch Lord of the Rings be like, you know, it's fancy. I wish it existed. That's what I would say. I wish, the, I, I love the Lord of the Rings. But now it's like, oh shit, the astral plane. Straight out of the astral plane. We got it served for us here in this beautiful piece of art. And that's how I'm going to be watching Lord of the Rings now. So it's going to be a bazillion times more interesting than before. Now I've ran the Lord of the Rings marathons over and over. But the last one I ran was years ago. This will be very, before, I, last time I ran it, I didn't even do a psychedelics yet. Okay, which is why in the old days I'd be like, I wish this existed, you know? But now I just know it's every bit as real as this one. Channeled to us via token, via his pineal gland, his third eye, straight into this dense frequency, right? And I mean, you know, he channeled a part of the astral plane where it's still pretty fucking bad. Like there's Sauron and Oryx and like some bad shit's happening. So it's not like he channeled the rosy uh, plane of existence per se, he channeled a, a part of the astral plane that is also similar to this one, okay? In conflict, the duality is very strong. The yin and the yang, the light and the darkness. The, the conflict is very, very uh, persistent and apparent in it. Uh, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So, uh, I will be doing, again, videos. They'll come in and out, and I think they'll be quite entertaining. I like how two, you know, even Game of Thrones has a lot of humor. I like how there's a lot of humor in this. Because I feel making these videos will give me, will make me lighter. Because now, you know, you, you kind of talk about funny things and you sort of like break it down and you share laughter. And then same, same thing for you guys. Because I'm a big fan of Seinfeld and South Park. They just, every time I watch them, I'm like laughing on the floor. <laughs> okay. And then there is, you know, Game of Thrones, Sopranos, Lord of the Rings. I'm looking forward to this. These are beautiful pieces of art. Five beautiful, fantastic pieces of art. Okay? So even if you haven't watched them, maybe if one of the videos you watch and it sort of piques your interest, you could go and look up the season number in, in, the, in, the, in the episode and watch it. And for Seinfeld and South Park... You don't even need to be familiar with the show. You can watch it. Lord of the Rings is three movies. They're very long. Three, four hours each. You should watch it, okay? Just go watch it. Game of Thrones, you need to know the storyline, but you could also, if you want to introduce yourself, you like something from a particular episode, you go watch that episode, and then maybe that, that piques your interest, you go watch it from the beginning, okay? Same thing with Sopranos. You could watch Sopranos, like you could pop in season four and watch it. Again, if you're not understanding the old characters and stuff, you won't get everything, but you'll, it'll still be entertaining, and it'll still just be fun to watch, Okay? So I'm looking forward to this. I want to thank all our beautiful Patreons for their support. You guys are amazing. You guys are awesome. Uh, and uh, I can't possibly express my gratitude for your support, for your continued support, for your generosity. That's amazing. Thank you, guys. If you would like to support this channel, 
just like a couple of bucks a month. Come on. Come on, a couple of bucks a month. What is that? $2 a month. Okay, if you regularly watch this channel, you go on Patreon and support it with just $2 a month. Right? $2 a month. If enough people do it, I can do this full time. So, thank you guys uh, and I appreciate it. Until next time, may the force be with you.